Okay, so I found this video on uh, YouTube. Somebody very kindly uploaded um, something called Sakuga Running. And I found it interesting to see that, um, let's do it in black, Let's uh, that these runs are really, really, um, if they exhibit any of the laws of animation, um, I would say that they exhibit the laws of pose to pose, um, exaggeration, orking, uh, slowing in and slowing out, you know, more than anything else. So what I'm going to start doing is, as I'm going to start doing just, and you'll see that how few poses there are in this um, uh, sequence, actually. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but what we're going to do is we're going to understand how these guys get away with so little animation frames, but they get really nice action in their animation. So this run that I found is really interesting because I don't know where it's from or what it, um, what it is. Yeah, as I'm saying, I don't know where it's from, but I do like the way it works. So I'm going to just go from, um, I'm, I'm missing out a few frames, but I'm going to go to what I think are the main things to take away from in a pose to pose way. Okay, so obviously we've got an up pose here and I'm going to switch between the up and down poses. Okay, now if any of you know my runs from Real Animator Training, you will know that um, we have a pose called the down pass position okay and we have a pose called the up so what i'm doing here is i'm just focusing on the silhouette so i can come back and draw in the character a little bit later and you can see all those little details and how to manage those shapes but it's probably best to um all right let me just concentrate here this is going to be the pose right so this is up down up so it's all literally, so you can see going on here, it's just really all about just the up and downs. And these poses are, are always very, very strong in anime. So um, they really, really help sell the action. But you see, so this kind of, uh, when I say strong, okay, they're strong, but at the same time, they are exaggerated so the law of exaggeration is really really uh something that we need to uh think about when doing this thing so we can see already we've got this up down up down action going on here okay so up down up again like this okay um and we're just going to continue Let's see how easy it is to pull this off. Okay, so now we have another down. Now I've noticed in the down pass, he loses his um, he loses his um, arms in the shot. And also, what's interesting is the arcing of the head. Okay, I can even I can even tell what's going on with the arcing of the head um, just by looking at the down passing action. Now, as I said, the I, I would never, uh, I personally would never animate a run with so few frames. Um, it's not the way I like to work. It's, I, 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 it's not my particular effect. But I tell you what, it's very, very effective and it looks good. So I can understand why a lot of people like to animate, like, like this stuff. And it means less work, you know. So, you know, more power to these guys. So this is the next up coming here like that. I think we'll just do three steps, okay? Um, so the next up will be coming up forward, a little bit more forward. So what's happening in the cycle is, is also, you know, it, it isn't just cycling, like we're call, I'm calling it a cycle because the, it's the background's moving, really. But really, there's, um, there's a lot of difference in what the character is doing. Um, he's going through the same poses, but each time they're varying, 
okay so it's it's a cycle it's not really a cycle okay might be nice to call it a cycle because there's a panning background and all that but it isn't it isn't a run cycle so it's it's just important okay now uh, it's really good to see the silhouettes okay defining even where even getting follow through and overlap in that silhouette so at the moment what we have right now is, is we just have this okay so we can even see that even as i scrub through that it really feels like there's some guy dra dramatically running and the head up and down is not so over the top okay it's not such over the top action um, I'm gonna just do one more exchange and then I'm gonna start drawing the character in on top of it let's do that dun, dun. okay so the down pass which one shall we do um, let's keep it on this one this is interesting a little bit of variation in there okay right let's do that so now we're gonna bring him down okay the important thing is also the silhouette of what's going on in his hair will really help understand that and then what else you're going to understand is is actually just how simple you know the drawing aspect is so people aren't gonna what, what i see is a lot of people self-training themselves anime they because they don't understand the secret science of shape simplification and they're afraid of redrawing the characters you just cut out the head and and uh, bob it but if you know how to manage shapes you'll see with this it isn't a cut out head it's very similar but there's a there's a little subtle changes in the um, in the mouth and eyes that just stop it from being um, a sliding up and down piece of paper you know uh, cut out style so this is this is nice limited run I, I understand I'm not that big on anime term terminology but I understand that Sakuga means um, well animated or something like that I'm sure I'm gonna get a plethora of comments correcting me on that um, uh, all I I just know good animation or bad animation um, I don't like to um, I don't compensate with names or terminology or whatever. I'm not that much of an anime fan to have looked really into it. Is it good or is it bad? That's all I care about. But like, so if this is one of the ones that has had more time spent on it, it's still very, very limited, but it is very, very strong because you'll see even at this stage um, where I'm going between just up and down poses, it really works quite well doesn't it even without drawing the character in you can just see that because this really shows the pose to pose action strong defined poses so I haven't even drawn the character in but just by seeing those hands in those poses and that head going up and down a little bit not too much and that pass position where no hands are there uh, where the body's a little thin can really see this dramatic effect of that now let's start building on it shall we if I'm gonna start building on it we need to change the color up a little bit so I'm just gonna change the colors up on these um, so I can draw on top okay so. bear with me on that um this and like this right okay let's get in there let's have a look see at the guy uh at moving all these shapes around a little bit okay so i'm just going to go back and find the frames that i referred to there's a lot more frames to this run but i'm, I'm not going to spend um too much time on that right so i'm just going to start uh, I'm gonna, gonna gonna be quite fast actually so I'm just gonna start uh, drawing in the outline shape of the character but what is worthy of note is is that the foremouth comes okay and then we kind of keep everything in this little outline shape here for his um, other mouth okay which the inside okay 
so what we're going to look at is I'm going to understand, you got to understand anatomy. So you got to understand that there's a cheekbone here and the eye is going to fit in here. So my invisible eye sees all of that. Okay. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to put in the eye around about there like that. I can see it. I've got it to refer to me, but it's not difficult to copy because I can, I can see it there like that. Now, what else is going to help me is, is that in line with his eye is the width of his mouth. Okay. So I'm explaining all this now so we can move quicker as you see me drawing the animation a lot quicker because I'll be referring to this. I'll be doing this frame a lot. Okay. So he's going to come here like this. Okay. So we have his mouth in there like that. Now what we need to understand, I'm going to get another pen here, is we have a thing called the zygomatic bone here. Okay. The zygomatic bone connects to a temporal bone. Okay which comes around here like this, okay? So what this thing here is the zygomatic arch. Here we have an auditory ear canal, okay? And that's where our ear goes. So every time I draw this thing, I don't try and imagine where his ear goes, okay? Because the animation I'm referring to, his ear just goes right at the back here like this. I just understand that in a straight line from his eye, okay? So I'm drawing an invisible straight line from his eye, which just represents the zygomatic arch. So this is where, where anatomy, so hopefully like to anybody who's into anime that's just watching this, chanced upon this, if, if, if maybe I can sell anatomy to you by, by this, okay? So it might look like if you don't know that stuff, you might just plonk an ear there and think, oh yeah, you'll just make it up. But then what goes here is the angle of the jaw. But then again, if you, I'm going to just mention this, okay? So if you have, you've got the, the upper skull, okay, the calvira, okay, which is like this. And all that thing I mentioned, okay, the zygomatic, the arch, the temporal, okay, the occipital, the parietal, the frontal, okay. Then you have an auditory ear canal, but then you have this temple mandibular joint where your mandible, your jaw comes in, okay. So around the auditory ear canal would be the jawline. So that's why this one little dink of a line that we have here is going to be, you watch when I do this, I'm going to draw effortlessly, make it very consistent with very little trouble at all because of, because I know that. Okay. Um, it's not that I'm a good copier. Okay. It's anybody can be a good copier if they know that, you know, without, without any struggle at all. So I'm referring to an anime run. I'm, I'm breaking it down to learn something about how anime runs work. But I'm also um, putting in the anime drawing style on there uh, of the character, okay, to understand how the character shapes work as well, okay, from a drawing perspective. Now this thing, okay, like if we look around here, okay, again with the temporal section okay which comes around here we have this part of the head coming into the zygomatic arc near the orbit of the skull you see that's just where his hairline goes it's not once you understand that you really decode it it really is very very simple this thing comes here like this and his hair gonna come on top now I'm gonna keep an eye on his follow-through okay an overlap of the hair I'm not gonna copy it perfectly but I'm just going to uh, get the shape in there right so that took a bit of time because I had to explain okay now I'm gonna explain the body to you a little bit and then I'm gonna speed through the rest of these poses just so you can understand what I'm doing here okay so now we're gonna we're gonna throw in this shoulder so I'm gonna look at the shapes of this shoulder coming here I'm not gonna talk too much about shoulder anatomy and all of that stuff, um, otherwise the animation aspect will be gone. So I'm going to look at that line here, and I'm going to look at this line here. I'm going to put a little d dink of drapery on here, and we're going to do this. We're going to do this, okay? Now, how are we going to unify that? We're going to unify that with the guy's collar, which is going to come here like this, okay? Uh, which is going to come around here. Now he's got a bag, which comes here like that. Okay, so we've got something like this. Now here um, we have his hand, which is a little bit in a different position to what I had. So I'm just going to draw the outline of his hand. So the important thing to understand is, is I think this hand is a little bit weak, 
but it follows all the hand rules that I often talk about, which is keeping a nice clear shapes together like that. You know, two shapes and the open negative space here and the open negative space there. Okay, so that's where we get a kind of like this. A bit of a splodgy little hand that the guy's drawn, but I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna I'm not gonna try and improve on it or anything. I'm just gonna put what I see. Okay, right. One thing that I did miss out, which is kind of nice, which helps define this, is the shoulder and a little bit of drapery that coming here like that just makes that aspect a little bit more interesting. Okay, right, so that is our first pose, right? So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to have a look at the next pose, okay? And we're going to see how they relate. Right, so we're going to bring him down here like this. So I'm going to look at the shape of his head and he's coming down. Now I'm going to, interestingly enough, we, we've got like a change in this angle of his skull here and the nose is jutting a little bit outwards. So this is showing us how maybe, this is why I picked this run because it isn't a simple cutout head bobbing around that we see in some anime. It's, it's a little bit more uh, better, had a little bit more drawing and dimension in the poses. So here we have, as I said, the mouth is gonna stay open. I might as well just put it straight in there, okay? So that's going to stay around that silhouette like that. Okay, so we just go straight into that silhouette. Now notice how that's opening. Our teeth are our teeth are kind of inside that in a graphic way, with our tongue on top there like that. Okay, like just like that. And we've got a very very long uh, neck here. So there's a lot of pull on the guy's uh, body like this. So then again here I've got my thing to measure the eye with, okay, which is the eye is going to come up here, so we're not losing structure. Let's just pay a little bit of attention to that, okay, like that, and he's got his angry eye opening up like that. So again now we want to think about the ear, remember the zygomatic uh, arch is going to come up here like this, so all, I, all that we have is that and the jaw like this coming here. Now there's a bit of follow through and overlap on the hair on his sideburns which comes this way like this. We've got a very different hair pattern going on on his head which is kind of interesting. Um, this is actually sharing and this is actually helping me understand anime a bit better because I would personally never uh, put that kind of overlap on, on an animation. So but what this works very very well so I'm learning something from this myself uh, about what you can actually get away with um, so this thing is going to come around here like that now I noticed that I have slightly increased the volume of the character so I'm just going to bring it back later uh, if I get my uh, proportions correct then it's not a problem to resize so this thing is going to come here like this and this hair is jutting out like that right okay so Let's just resize them a little bit. That looks looking better, more in line with where my rough was. Now what we have on the colors is we just have the shape coming through. Okay, always continue. I don't continue on line, but I just skip the pen and draw and continue on top. So this this will be here like this. So we have this nice shape coming here and the shoulders coming down here like that. We come around here like this. Interesting color. Interesting way of drawing a color. Okay. So we just open this out. So look, if you really want to see what a, how, how to do this, is just really, if anything is showing you, the two things to take away is the pose to pose, is the strength of the poses. But if you look, I'm just drawing shapes and filling in inside those shapes. Okay. And we're getting the effect that we kind of want. Okay, so now let's uh, go on to the next pose. Okay, which is out here like this. So another up, forward up. So he's coming up and forward. So his head is going to be here. Now this is coming. We're kind of keeping that new bulbous angle. His nose 
is out here. So notice how I'm using the shape, okay? I don't know the character and I'm not really drawing much construction. That's true because I already know construction, so I can kind of bypass that. But if anything, I'm just managing shapes, okay? So this little tooth is just in here like that with the tongue in here. So this is a really graphic way of animating a mouth, which is very interesting. I've never been a, a huge fan of the way anime animate mouths, but um, it's interesting to see the kind of designs and shapes they have. So then this nose is going to be here like this and everything is going to be in line with the mouth, okay, with the eye coming in this section here. Something like this and this and with the eye angry there. So again, I'm, I'm not worrying about uh, uh, the increased volume as I'm flipping because the thing is, is Either in back in the day you'd use a Xerox machine, okay? But like e in this day and age we have the benefit of just rescaling it. But like I'm not gonna break away from the proportions of the drawing, okay? Um, I I'm gonna keep the character in proportion. So when I rescale it, I don't really have that kind of, you know, I don't need to worry. I know everything will kind of be working into place. Okay, so this thing is going to come up here like this. This is basically his up pose. Let's look at what's going on with his hair as we're coming up. He's got this one hair bit that's like this. And this kind of rises up like that. The hair is kind of stiff here. So we're keeping trailing. We're just changing the angle on the back of the hair like that. Okay, the angle on the back of the hair is changing like that and that's going like that okay so now I know my proportions are intact I can just bring it down okay and you see as long as you understand the anatomy and the proportions you're all right and I'm notice how he's not going so up and down okay he's not going so up and down a little bit big still um, Let's go between hair and hair. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, right. So, of course, as I'm doing this live and just making a study of it, I'm not gonna, not gonna really spend too much, that long trying to perfect what I'm my, copying my drawing of it. The important thing when you do this is that you understand more the the animation aspect of it, the shapes, what's happening to the shapes, and then I'll, we'll talk about the poses. Uh, and the transition in and out of the poses through arcs afterwards. So we have got this hand, which is basically these three fingers together like this, and this one finger hair like that, like this, and then this one is coming like that. Now that's not a very, I have to say that that is not a very nice looking hand, but that's unfortunately what I can see when I'm looking at it, okay? Personally, um, personally, okay, I can't help myself. I would have used these three positions here and this one here and crafted them together to make a more kind of dynamic hand like this. But never mind. That's what we see. It, uh, it uses a lot of, there's not much smearing and whizzing going on here. Um, uh, whiz lines going on here, but uh, there's a little bit in the hands. Uh, and another reason I chose this animation is it's not relying on smears to fill in the gaps, you know, um, which a lot of good anime doesn't do, you know. Look at the way the color changes shape here. I love that. So this rises in like this and the color changes shape to really show the emphasize uh, the opening up of that collar there like that. So this is makes the this stuff makes the run uh, very, very um, convincing from a drawing standpoint. OK, it's going to come there like that. And then we're going to have some grease through here like this and another one. 
and then we're going to just finish that hair like that so you see so at the moment you see just with these poses there's not so much up and down of the head as we think there would be but look how dynamic it is very very dynamic it's all in those big changes love it absolutely love it let's move on to the next one uh, da, 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 da. okay so the next one is this uh, down pose I think we had something like this one this one here like that right okay so let's go so he's gone down here now his angle of his is his, his head is changing very minor there is a lot of changing in the drawing of this guy's head which I really really like to be honest with you because um, it is it isn't just a, a one drawing moving around which is what I see so often in this anime run cycles okay so we have this mouth coming down here look at how the mouth is changing angle as he as he moves down that's very good very good actually that's using the um, the drag principle on the mouth lovely stuff there has to be said so the nose is less jutting on this pose uh, the eye is keeping angle here like this okay and the eyebrow is the eyebrow is even dra dragging upwards how how cool is that subtle little difference like that really nice okay so that's having here like this okay so then here we want to keep an eye on the shape of his head we don't want to lose that okay um, so oh it looks like OBS is disconnecting but um, I'm uh, taping this stream anyway so um, if it goes out you can uh, I'll just post a YouTube link to it because I'm gonna re-upload this section of the stream on YouTube because I know my youtubers will appreciate this them being anime orientated people okay so this um uh hair is going to be trailing back like this so we've got a lot of clumping up a lot of delay uh in the in the hair a lot of as the head's going down the hair is delayed back up like that now let's get the ear okay so the ear is going to come down here like this now this ear, he's actually drawn a bit more of this part of the ear. So he's squashing and stretching his ear for some reason in this pose. Don't quite know why. This is all going to come up along here, along the temporal side. And it's going to have something like that. Okay. Then we're going to have the jawline and the back of the hair okay which is going to come here so then what we have is we have the color okay so this contrast is what really makes these runs work so well just got him a little bit low i want to put him a little higher he's not that low okay that's a, just me because i all i personally exaggerate the up downs from my um background the way I animate um, so this is going to be here like that so we really see the change up in that and I think yeah we just have a few more to do <laughs> okay so I think this one is it yeah this is the pose so let's see what's happening here so here we're really really exaggerating the we're just going extreme with that arm every time so he's building up okay so we're gonna have this mouth opening up like this and you'll notice as I um, as I keep going um, I st I, I'm becoming a lot f more familiar with the shapes you know of this particular anime style so people say um, how do you draw in this style how do you draw in that style just study just study the style make studies like what I'm making off 
hair you know um, and, and do it purely to learn okay now I do not draw in the anime style I do not it is not something that I enjoy drawing in it so I enjoy anime I love some anime drawings um, I absolutely love the designs of video game series like King of Fighters and Samurai Showdown some of those SNK games have some of the best draw drawings I've ever seen I absolutely love the visual style of SNK video games I even in my mid-twenties used to dress like an SNK character so I absolutely do not dislike anime it just doesn't inspire me enough to want to draw it um, that's all it inspires me enough to want to dress like it there you go anyway um, so the point I'm making with that little deviation is that if you understand the science of shape simplification uh, which is what I often disclose and teach in real animator training library um, you will also kind of understand that the style is secondary you know it, once you understand what it is interpreting okay it's just trying to be a person and then you understand those shapes okay um, then you'll understand that okay well these are the shapes that these people have chosen to draw with okay and animation is all about changing shapes okay so this is going to come here like this right what I am going to do is I'm going to move our guy a little bit forward here because I think he needs to be a little bit more forward and he's got his collar is going to come here like this unifying this outline here okay and then we're just gonna fill in this shape okay so we're gonna put this shape here like this we're gonna put this shape here like that we're gonna then add this shape you see how you just fill in shapes you know it really is very very simple but people I think get so emotionally involved another thing is is he needs to be higher I think people get so emotionally involved because they like the style or they like the aesthetic and their understanding of how to draw is l literally based on just copying okay and yes copying is a broad word word okay because in order to study this run I'm just copying it so you could say I'm copying okay I'm copying this hand but here's the thing I'm copying this hand okay and I have to say I'm not very impressed with the way these guys draw hands but I'm copying this hand okay um, with the understanding of what it represents okay this shape here okay represents all the uh, metacarpals this bit here represents the carpals and these represent the phalanges okay and I know that in animation theory we either group two together in the middle with one open like that we either group three together in the middle with one open like that or we either splay it all okay but then when we splay it all we might bend these or straighten these so as I'm making my copying I'm making it with all that knowledge like I shared with the zygomatic of the ear and all that thing which makes it a very straightforward affair okay so let's go and continue let me see if my stream is back am I still streaming yes it looks like I'm still streaming yeah okay here we go yeah it looks like I'm still streaming but the thing is, is as I said if you're watching and it seems like I'm not streaming um, don't worry this is going on YouTube this part of the the, the, the rest of the stream where I reviewed people's work uh, shall I say the the more serious aspect of the stream 
this is you're going to learn from this, but this is a little bit of what I call animation masturbation. Not animation masturbation, mental masturbation. Animation masturbation is when an animator knows how to animate and over animates just for the pleasure of it. Um, mental masturbation is when somebody just watches somebody do something very efficiently and very well uh, with probably about it's probably 90% demo 5% um, entertainment and 5% teaching okay um, and you watch that and you really feel that you're le really learning something now why am I telling you that that this is my video okay I'm putting this out there as a learning video okay well because frankly I know that plenty of people teach like this and if it worked then the whole world self teaching themselves animation would be good at animation okay if it worked the whole world would get it okay everybody like 90% of people learning how to animate would um, animate really really well just by following the plethora of free tutorials out there where you watch somebody do something um, either quarter decent or very decent um, quarter decent half decent or very decent um, in this case very decent okay um, but it doesn't matter how decent it is it doesn't work okay because I can tell you everything about this but I know that when you copy it due to your inexperience in certain aspects like anatomy okay like understanding shapes like understanding all those basic fundamental principles of arcing pose to pose okay um, slowing in and slowing out and all those things you're going to just you'll get something out of it you'll go away you'll get something out of it you'll practice drawing and you'll learn something about the style but um, that's about it really it's about it um, you look you can expect the payoff to come maybe about 10 years later if you don't learn fundamentals okay you learn fundamentals the payoff like the payoff of me self-teaching myself by studying this run okay because as I said I'd never animate a run like this so I'm learning something from this myself okay so I'm learning a lot because I never animate I'd never animate a run like this it's too simplistic for me but at the same time I tend to I tend to like tend to use a lot of drawings because I like that kind of stuff but if you can do it in less drawings that's actually a very efficient and very effective so that's in that way anime is very good so I'm learning something about efficiency in a good way not soft not using software from studying this and I will learn I will get probably 90% to I would say even almost a hundred percent benefit of studying this because I understand all those principles and I know what to look for when I'm doing it okay I can tell you about it oh well which I will do when we do the arcs at the moment I'm just telling you about the drawing because we're drawing in a character but um, as and until you've experienced those arcs and those things and pose to pose and slowing in and slowing out properly firsthand you're not gonna get it um, it's gonna be very difficult you're just gonna watch watch it watch it being done go away and try and implement and it's gonna be a struggle now a lot of people in the in in YouTube comments when I say things like that give me a lot of hate because they say oh you're being very demotivational no I'm actually should be motivating those who really want it to, as I say do it for real study the stuff you need to study before doing this would I be demotivated by telling a child to, you know, to get that wanted to learn to ride a horse to instead focus on balance and learning real horse riding instead of putting a dollar or a penny into a merry-go-round style, those cheap little things that you see where they ride those 
horses for fun where they just sit on the thing. That's what people animate like in my opinion. They animate like little kids in the supermarket or the mall that see like a flying elephant or a horse and they sit on it and put in a couple of bucks and their dad or mum watches them um, playfully like pretending that they're riding that horse you know so you know that's tell it it's not being motivated that's just it's just joining in in your your little little fun you know you're just having fun just fine but that's not what AMB animation is about I motivate people who want to do it properly to do it properly so I'm gonna say things that might upset a few people right so this guy is his eye is widening okay and he's coming up here on the last pose had to go off a little bit on that tangent while I'm doing this because otherwise it just you know and I'm putting his ear here and the eye goes here how many times are you gonna see me draw the side of this guy's head right okay we're gonna be moving on to the breakdowns okay afterwards and that's where we're gonna be talking about the arcs the slowing in and the slowing out and all that kind of stuff so the hair follow through is making this kind of shape and so we've got basically these three triangles with these little bunches coming in underneath right so let's go in here and put the body okay nice body hair so we see a union between the front shoulder and the rear shoulder okay like this and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring him up a little bit because he has risen a bit in this shot up and forward and then here his collar is gonna come around here like this and we're gonna bring that round there like that where this comes round and joins in here now look at the collar changing shape this we just join it like that okay you see how the changing shape of the construction of the collar works okay and this thing goes here see if you don't understand that this shape is how to create this shape here and how to animate in and out of it then you you really will just be copying in the dark you won't learn anything so when you're when you're studying look out for those kind of things you look out now the hand is going to be around here now again the hands is again following that rule that I said okay so we have three fingers together okay one two three really don't like drawing fingers like that but anyway let's do it I've just some people could say I've probably been brainwashed by Milk Carl's way of drawing hands but I just like it okay right so anyway right so let's have a look um, at what we got um, this is uh, the person's run who they sent me uh, just having a look at the Facebook group yeah we're still streaming so we've only got five people on stream so I was wrong I think um, growth development and progress don't even want to watch this well there we go right so let's go and so you see here okay even with the ups and downs we've really just this this is if this isn't an advertisement for pose to pose animation I don't know what is okay I'm scrubbing through even if I scrub through super fast you can get away with that so this really really shows how having strongly defined poses really really make it feel like a, a really really uh, uh, effective run cycle I've got a slight gain in volume there uh, but this is only a study so it doesn't matter I'm not going to fix it because we need to move on and put the breakdowns in there so if you see if we look at that there's just a transition although there's variation his run gets bigger and bigger and his his expression gets bigger and bigger and his up and down gets bigger and bigger so if you look at your one uh, mute midori it's just too much head banging going on um, too much head banging too much movement um, if we look at the movement in this 
it's literally just up down up down up down and not not much of an angle change going on in there so it's very very important that we understand that now I'm gonna go back okay I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start putting in one in between Okay, there's more than one in between, but I'm not going to do every drawing, but just to show you how they space it to give it weight. Okay, because one extra drawing, there's only probably about three drawings per step on this thing. But one extra drawing gives it a lot of weight. Um, so, you know, um, let's go looking for that. Okay, so, and this is going to talk about arcing now. This is great this is absolutely great so let's um, put in our I'm gonna be fast now okay I'm gonna be super fast I'm just gonna do it as is okay so this guy is it's coming down here like this okay he's gonna be coming in a circle so again if you don't watch out for this stuff then you're gonna now his hair is coming like this and this is arcing down and this is arcing in beautiful circular arc of the hand look how that hand is moving so the law of arcing is coming in here okay we're not just moving down up and down on 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 the hand so okay so look at the arcing and the hair follow through and then this is kind of coming together like this lovely lovely stuff okay that's enough I'm going to light gray that and I'm not even going to put light box on. I'm just going to do what I can from here because the pose to pose kind of just shows shows it for what it is. Okay, so this is going to open up. Okay, mouth is opening up and turning. So we're spacing into the down. Okay, we're favoring the down pose on this arc. Okay, so this is a slowing in concept. Okay, so we have the I'm going to be quick. I'm not going to really draw in much of this eye because I want to press on and talk about the spacing of the lecture. Okay. So he's coming down. Okay. So he's coming down. And let's just keep the ear. Now let's talk about the hair. Okay. So the hairstyle right what we're having here is we are having this big thing shape hair like this and we're having some real um, follow through going on here so as he's going down his hair is continuing up okay okay so we've got this nice shape of the hair continuing up like this beautiful okay so the law of follow through and overlap okay so I'm just gonna be quite quick with the back of that so look how the turn in the head is happening okay I've been a little bit loose with the drawing on this one but it doesn't matter as long as you can see that we're closer to the down pose hair like that okay and that really gives them that feel we're keeping this uh, color in profile before the change happens okay we can see a, see a little bit of the reverse side of it we can see as shoulder is swinging through look at the shoulder is moving the other way now this beautiful hand arc this is a nicely drawn hand now we have a nicely drawn hand so this can come here these two in the middle are going to come together like this okay unfortunately on the nicely drawn hand i'm being more careless never mind okay let's just put that there like that i don't want to as i said I don't want this to be complete animation masturbation okay where you watch me just copy it, the drawing nicely you've already seen enough of that I'm speeding through very loose now so here we're going to change that angle there like that okay so notice the thing to take away here is following the law of um, follow through and overlap okay um, no, the law of spacing, which is slowing in and slowing out, there's a big movement and we're staying in the down pose. So we're waiting it at the down pose and then we're coming back up into the up pose. Okay, so if I remember, there is no in-between after that. So there's this, 
yeah and we go straight into that and then we if i remember we have another up pose so we go like this then we go here and then before we come back into this we have another up pose okay so before we go into this so between hair and hair now okay there's nothing between nothing between hair and hair but between hair and hair okay so we just in between into the down then between hair and hair i'm gonna put in a breakdown okay so there's two breakdowns actually here but i'm gonna just put one in here which is really really nice because i'm gonna actually if i have a look we're gonna get i'm gonna circle his arc this way okay so if he's moving if he's moving down and coming forward okay um i'm going to have him coming upwards and down again like this i'm not going to have him coming back down like that okay this is important so he's i'm just going to put this here like this so i'm favoring this up pose actually i'm not going to in between i'm going to favor this up pose favoring the up pose right um this is all i'm using the light box on just to help me now we have more follow through on the hair so we can really see what's happening to give continuity the hair is making it flow okay there's big big jumps the hair is making this flow so now we're moving this guy down a bit okay and what's happening is, is this guy's coming down his arms are still out so we're favoring this arm pose and this hand is coming up hair okay and it's coming up here like this. So here you see the law of um, slowing in and slowing out. We're just slowing out of the up now, okay? So that's done. Now I'm gonna very quickly and be very loose. So a lot, lot of really stray from the model a little bit because I just don't have, I don't want to spend too much on this, too much time on this. So we're gonna favor that pose here like that. We're gonna open that out, I'm not gonna, too much I'm just favoring and staying around this pose so I'm referring to this one so we're gonna have this come up here like this okay and his eye is still gonna be up here this is where my you know because I'm rushing my eye is gonna float a little bit okay but that's all right I don't care I know that we're staying around the top oh well it didn't float never mind there we go so there we go now we're following this the, let's have a look at the hair what's happening i'm going to pay attention this hair is opening out it's coming and one up low like so a new line there like that a line this is straightening out like this um this is all coming up like this like this through and nice little bit of follow through on that hair a very interesting interesting okay i would i think i might tone it down just a little bit it feels a bit big it looks like that on the screen but i don't think that it would be that much of a gap in the drawing okay we just want to delay it out like that this will come here like this ear zygomatic arch so understand the anatomy helps me place the ear keep everything in the kind of the same place okay delay that head and that's what will give it the weight okay that's what will give it the weight that we see coming in here like that so then we have the collar okay so the collar is kind of opening out this way what's it doing where's it going oh it's just going back on itself so we have it going like this okay so then we need to have the collar would be opening out as he's changing direction like that so then this shape will be changing direction and this shape so there's a drastic change happening drastic change leaving a lot to the imagination okay but because they've got such a strong build up to the pose now look at the crease the 
look at the crease and the shoulder okay they've got such a strong uh strongly exaggerated defined um pose is why we get such a s s we're able to make such a big transitional gap okay like that right so let's have this okay so this is this this is going to the typical shape you see disney and anime shapes exactly the same just drawn with different lines okay so you see the thumb is like this the hand is like this and in here sits all the other little fingers exactly the same thing uh that disney do because it's all based on the same thing it's based on hand anatomy and appealing shapes and the secret science of shape simplification okay so that's gonna come there like that come down there like that right so we're favoring the up we're slowing out of the up okay so in the first one we slow we slow into into the down and then we go straight pop into an up and slow out of the up okay to add some variation before i continue let's just see how we've weighted it by doing that okay you see just by adding those we've already added some arcing and weight to the action okay and the hair is following through and all that kind of stuff so let's continue so what's the next breakdown okay so there are more frames but i'm not going to put them in i'm i'm just going to put one breakdown between each of these because that re literally all it is you know um there's another frame there oh interesting now which one am i going to do i think i'm going to go i think i'm going to go for a this one is done on an even this one is a half okay because this one we 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 just animate linearly there's a lot of in between it there's a there's, a, there's this is this is just a half interesting so the timing is varied we slow in we slow out and then this breakdown is just halfway through okay so there'll be an in-between on either side giving a linear movement in and out of the run and the hair will be obviously following through and overlapping like that which is all good okay so you see you see what i was talking about earlier how i know when i'm studying what to look for and which drawing to pick well, because I understand the laws. I understand the laws of timing. I understand the laws of slowing in and slowing out. So I understand, okay, well, the spacing on this one, he's arcing the hand. The hand is going to arc this way in. Um, and then I look at the other drawings and how they were spaced, and I know, oh, no, those would be in-betweens. This is the breakdown. Okay? So that's why I, I must stress those things to you. Otherwise, when you're picking your frames and you're trying to do it at home, it's it's going to be difficult so as this is a linear one and he's coming more into the up pose i'm going to favor the up pose more so than the down pose um so i'm going to refer to that okay so let's just very quickly just draw this guy in okay like this just shade that in There you go. Um, one of the reasons, another reason I'm spending a lot of time helping uh, Bridget Hernandez um, is, is, you know, she's a regular on my YouTube streams. She, for the past, I don't know, two years, she has tried, almost attended, she's almost been there on every stream, you know, and added to that, you know, Am I being a little bit fickle? Yes, I am. I think it's very cute. I saw a video of her where she's doing her own anime uh, series. And she has modeled one of the school teachers on me. <laughs> and she was trying, she can't, hasn't got any voice actors. And she was trying to mimic my voice. And it just brought a big smile to my face and you know if you've ever read the book how to win friends and influence people I have read it but some people probably believe I haven't because they think I'm a meanie but um, Midori Hernandez has really you know made me feel like I want to help her out you know so I'm spending a little bit of time on this stream 
uh, for her. I'm not going to lie, partly because that video brought a smile to my face. Okay. Right, so we're coming up into there. Now I have, I'm a little bit too careless with my volume there. So, oops, I morphed his face slightly. I transformed it in the bad way. Let's try and save it and bring it back. We could just press undo, but I don't want to. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so that's working in with the arc. Okay, right, so um, shoulder is coming through here. And the spacing of the arc is coming here. So again, you see this whole hand is almost a square-like shape. Okay, I could just leave it at that and it'll work when I flick it. But let's just break into the square through the secret science of shape simplification. And there's our hand. Okay, so there we go. And then we're going to go in like this. Through the back collar. There's a little bit of line coming here. Okay, now I haven't timed this run. I'm just dragging it in the timeline. But it literally, it's all on twos, by the way. Or, you know, so, but it literally has so few drawings. But you can see how we're coming linearly into that. So now what's the next step um, of action? Okay, as we come linearly up. And the hair is interesting how the hair changes dramatically like that okay then and then and then we're going linearly back down okay so that's interesting so let's have a look at that okay so we up we're, we're linear so we're going linearly down so we're, as we came up linear we're going down half okay so this is so it's funny the first few steps were all on a a slow in and into the down and a slow out out of the up and these frames are very much um, look at his hair how oh, it's really dragging these frames are very much just um, half so again if you have um, studied um, anything like that whether it's in my real animator training library with the fundamentals of the bouncing ball with the halves going up on thirds and up on half up on thirds and down on halves and all that kind of stuff and you know those basic fundamental principles um, this stuff will really really you know then then you'll be able to look at these kind of things with a with a new uh, awareness level of awareness and understand how to analyze them from a from a from an animator's perspective uh, rather than somebody who likes to just draw anime and and is copying frame by frame to try and just make their run you know work it's just you know it's it's all right you know but that's more of a going through the motions process if you really want to understand this stuff then you've got to make sure that you are aware of the things that you are copying why is this doing that why is it doing that you, you you know you need to understand those things so we're coming down i'm just straight away i haven't even i'm just drawing on top now i'm just really just rushing it out now there's a lot of inconsistencies in what i'm drawing here i'm not really uh keeping my shapes or volumes or anything like that i think i'm just getting through it so the head I've, I've, is a little bit favoring of the down but not too much i think it's just the angling there slightly let's have a look at that yeah that's fine this we'll put that like that now we'll sort the hair out coming around there interesting hair shapes going on as I'm kind of rushing it it's kind of sh interesting the way they've changed the whole temple thing so his form of his hairstyle has just changed it's just come like that for this frame I wonder why they've done that perhaps they've done that to illustrate to enhance the way because the back of his hair is still on the rise in this so we have this you know it might just look like I just 
drew a load of lines to make the back of his hair like that but I'll tell you what I saw okay just so you understand I saw one two three okay and then that one two three is broken up like this one two three okay so that's what I saw now you see how um, the drawing is drastically different from my rough okay but it is enough to um, to convey the spacing you don't need to see me accurately portray that anymore I'm gonna put in just one more frame okay and then we're going to see uh, what are we even going to do out of this frame? Is it even got one frame? Let's have a look. Okay, yes it has. Yes it has. Which is another. Where, where now, he's, I think as he's keeping his pace, the animation is becoming a little bit more linear. Okay, so we've, we're, we're now just getting, settling into just using halves. Okay before we were talking about third spacing uh slowing in and slowing out in the breakdowns i'm just gonna i'm just gonna just half everything for the sake of it i'm not even gonna really copy his thing i'm just gonna do that yeah that'll do for the sake of it that'll illustrate my point we're literally just halving now there's a lot of weird different hair shape going on here so um I might stick with that and look at what they're doing with the hair there because I don't really know uh, the anime follow through is the same law of follow through but okay one two three four coming like that yeah okay so then we just have one two one two one okay one two down there like that it's funny how the shape changes up as it comes to the three like that but we'll just have that going in there like this and then here what we're doing is we have the hand now the the, the way the hand is coming in here it's going to arc like that in and out of the screen because i've seen all of the frames but i'm just going to put in this one here so all of the fingers are together on this and they're kind of delayed and dragging back like that you can see i'm really rushing the drawing now as i i think it's becoming superfluous so this thing is coming here like this and we're going to come out on this collar here like this is moving so we need to understand this shape of the collar okay we're going to bring this in it's going to come around like that something like that okay as we come into it like that and so this is going to come down there like this through here like this and then there's nothing here as we come into it like that okay that's it i'm not going to do any more drawing on that we have just had one breakdown in between in between them all let's see what we got okay I'm just going to oh, minimize this screen so I can see my chat screen going on here. Um, so let's see what we have here. Okay. Okay. So can you see how, okay, how many frames per step? One, two, three. Okay. We're just going like, so can you see how fluid it looks? Okay. With just so few, even if I go fast. Okay. Even if I scrub it fast. So props to the anime people. Okay respect to the anime people they really know they have mastered how to use as few drawings as possible to really get a nice effect but you know how they've done that shall i write it out for you shall i spell it out for you space and because i i, I know it is it's it's S-P-A-C-I-N-G, but I'm just going to do this because my spelling is never very good. So I'm just going to go with spacing, okay? In other words, okay, that's how, okay? So we've got pose to pose and, okay, we literally did pose to pose and we broke it down by just adding, okay, between hair, we, get, we favor the down. Look how close it is to the down pose, okay? Then here, we favor the up. 
Look how close it is to the up bows. Then here we're just halfway in between in a linear way. So we we have this randomization, if that's a word, random pattern so it doesn't feel so repetitive. And the strength of the poses is phenomenal. Okay, so we have really strong exaggeration. So the law of exaggeration can't be taken out of this. The law of appeal. Okay, so here's my takeaways what this run in anime, the laws that I believe this run exemplifies. It exemplifies all 12 laws, but we'll talk about the ones that I think really sell it, really, really are applied. First is the law of pose to pose. Okay, pose to pose. Okay, and straight ahead, but we're using pose to pose. Second, okay, is the law of slow in, slow out. Okay, third is the law of arcing. Okay, because even though, like, the, the, I, I put it third because you know the arcs leave a lot to the imagination, but because of the the way that the they're drawn in and out, we can see the arcs happening. Look at the hand arcing in and the the head, on all that stuff happening. Okay, so then we have the law of follow through. and overlap of course in the hair the hair brings the uni uni unity because this is such a staccato piece of animation because the hair is kind of follow throughing and overlapping it's making the fluid the illusion of fluidity okay so we have that we have the law of follow through and overlapping action and for me okay Throwing in extra is we have the law of exaggeration because we have taken all these laws and we've exaggerated them, okay? And you know, we have a nice this is how to exaggerate good. It doesn't feel exaggerated, but it's exaggerated. It's exaggerated in timing and it's exaggerated in the way the character. Uh, the poses, the strength of the poses, okay? And that brings in the sixth law that we have incorporated in into here. We have exaggerated it in an appealing way. It has a lot of appeal, okay? A whole lot of appeal. A great deal of appeal. I have learned something from doing this. Um, I have learned how to how to I still won't animate like this because as you know I like to I like to have this kind of okay this is my my way okay this is but that said I like the fact that we are using so few drawings okay it is economy economization but masterful masterful economization so this is a this is the way if you're going to cheapen out and not use frames and you're going to you you don't have enough time then still master the laws of animation so you can do it like this with very few drawings don't use smears to hide your inabilities. If you want to use cutout and software and think you're saving time, I actually think you're wasting time because building the puppet will take so long and fiddling with the hierarchy as the puppets get more advanced. Good luck with that. That's why you have different people building them in studios so the animators can just whack out the animation. But if you're doing it yourself, you don't waste time. Don't kid yourself. Just learn animation and draw, draw very few frames, but draw them pick the right frames and you know in that way people got me wrong that I absolutely love anime so I hope I've set the record straight in that area um, so that is what I have to say about that uh, let's see what's happening in the chat um, I used to cosplay a lot too uh, don't do like anime watch some series not inclined to any particular style 
Um, JP Jerome. Aaron AOX doesn't break down anime ever. When he does, you know it's going to be good. These are the skills I want to achieve. You're getting there, Aaron. You can see what I said, Curtis. Um, basically, though, next time, try and upload on YouTube. Please, Curtis. Okay, right. So, so as I said, um, I've tried my best to not make this a demo, but, you know, in a way, it is a demo. Okay. Um, if you really want to learn, these are the things you got to learn. These are the things that make up this. And this is only half. I've only got six here. Okay. There's 12 laws of animation. And if you really want to learn the laws of animation, um, I believe, and I would say this, there is no better place, no better place to learn them than in my real animator training library. You have been an absolutely fantastic audience. Thank you very much. If you're interested in joining my real animator training library, you can go to ambanimation.com and check it out. Here's what these guys have to say about it. Bye-bye. I must admit that at first I didn't trust it. He not only told, taught me how to animate, he taught me how to learn how to animate. Things uh, that I couldn't get from the books. Every video I watch, I'm learning new things. Um, he's the best teacher around, the best animator around that I've seen who's teaching. He motivates you, he encourages you, and most importantly, he instills in you a belief that you can do this. I've been to art school for four years and I've never had any lesson that was as good as the one that AMB gave me. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, you just got so much knowledge. The littlest things are what make the biggest differences. I strongly recommend them to anybody. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. So, are you going to join the library? I must...